Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. I've never had a financial institution with my student loans ask me for money up front. Student loans are getting larger and taking longer to pay off, which makes consolidation programs tempting. One of our viewers wanted to know if a consolidation program she learned about was legitimate, so she contacted our whistleblower hotline. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz investigated and finds out that some programs are worth leaving alone. I went to college and at Wapaton and at Moorhead Tech. Darcy Lesser says she'll be paying off her student loans for the next 20 years. So when she received this letter in the mail saying she could do it at a lower monthly rate and have it all paid off in 10 years instead, it piqued her interest. But she started to back off when they asked for her bank account and routing number. He said, well, you can give me a credit card number. And I said, I'm not giving you a credit card number either. When Lesser asked for more info, she received this email called the White House letter. It quotes President Obama. Searching student loans on the U.S. Department of Education's official government website, I found that Lessard can qualify for loan forgiveness as she works for a nonprofit. But the Better Business Bureau says she shouldn't have to pay for loan forgiveness. So that's something that you can apply for yourself qualify and take care of. The letter came from Direct Prep, a document preparation service. Yeah, they have your full social. Yeah, my full. That's crazy. Which had her entire social security number and the exact amount in student loan she owes. It looked just like a form that I had filled out for my um, student loan repayment program that I'm currently in. So how did they get her personal information? I don't really know where that information comes from. It could be a data breach. Uh, it could be using a public Wi-Fi. We're not 100% sure. The first source for that kind of breach is often the consumer themselves, I'm sorry to say. I mean, you know, honestly, through uh, sometimes consumers do give out their personal information. The Better Business Bureau and Federal Trade Commission both say they can't claim outright that it's a scam. But government affiliation claims are a red flag because the federal government certainly does not vet third party for profit debt relief companies. And though both the letter and the email appear to pass off as federal government documents, the first letter Lessard received clears itself of that if you look hard enough at the very bottom, saying DP is not affiliated with the government or any of its programs. Rose Iskowitz, Valley News Live. The FTC says the only way to tell for sure this is a scam would be to file a complaint with them. You can find that link by heading to our website and clicking on this story. And we also included a link to the government site where you can see if you qualify and apply for loan forgiveness scam free. As we mentioned, this story came to us on our whistleblower hotline. If you need help with an issue in your community, call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. In our schemes and ripoffs tonight, Fargo police are alerting you about a scam text message that's reaching area cell phones, falsely claiming it's from Wells Fargo. The text states the company needs to confirm banking information and directs people to supply personal data. Police say the scam is targeting Verizon customers and it asks that you remember to never verify your banking information via text or email. Wells Fargo customers who received a phony text message and clicked on an associated link are being advised to call the bank right away. April showers bring May flowers, but what about light snow in March? Hutch, can you help us out with that and tonight's weather planner? Yeah, from uh, what I'm hearing on Facebook, it brings a few frowns because uh, there is some unspring-like weather heading our way already. Winter storm watches across much of the central Dakotas into southeast North Dakota and west central Minnesota for Friday afternoon into Saturday. Here's a look at how the storm is expected to transpire. Windy snow developing late to the day on Friday. It will be accumulating out west already just getting started here in the FM area. It lasts through Friday night and into Saturday morning, ending by about midday for most of us. And the snowfall potential with this system will continue to build through the southern and central portion of the Dakotas to four to six inches, some spots seeing a little bit more, three to five in and around Fargo and Grand Forks. I got to tell you, though, this storm system will be followed up by another one on Sunday into Monday. So a couple of rounds of snow as we glide towards our weekend ahead. It looks quiet tonight. I'll have all the details on this storm and the one that follows it up here in just a couple of minutes. Not just light snow. No, it's pretty wet and heavy. All right, thanks. Yes. Well, make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. 
Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. Fire crews in Bemidji say an apartment fire there appears to have been accidental. Officials responded to the 1600 block of Bemidji Avenue North to find a fire in the patio area of the building yesterday morning. The flames were quickly put out and three people were able to get out safely. There's no cost estimate yet on damage to the building. Police are asking for your help again to identify some people of interest in ongoing investigations regarding separate crimes. If you have any information on who these folks might be or where they might be, contact Fargo Police at 701-235-4493. And if you need another look, we have these pictures posted on our website. A man accused of stabbing someone in Wisconsin could be in Minnesota, according to police. The stabbing happened last night as police responded to a man being stabbed in the throat during a fight in Menominee. Before police arrived, they say the suspect, 37-year-old David Hill, left the scene. Hill was last seen wearing a jean jacket, blue jeans, and carrying a red Nike bag. He's about 5 feet 8 inches tall and 195 pounds. If you have any information about Hill, call police. Bail has been set at $400,000 for a former Minneapolis police officer charged with third-degree murder in the death of an Australian woman last summer. 32-year-old Mohammed Noor made his first court appearance today after turning himself in the day before on charges of murder and manslaughter related to the death of Justine Damond. Moore did not make any statements, as the prosecution argued that he might be a flight risk, mentioning how a friend of Noor's had offered to shelter or provide him with housing last year. The defense quickly pointed out that Noor has remained in the Twin Cities during the investigation and turned himself in as soon as a warrant was issued. Cautiously optimistic. That's how lawmakers describe North Dakota's budget situation heading into the next session. Right now, the state has about $28 million more than expected, but the update wasn't a ringing endorsement either. The Legacy Fund benefited from increased oil production and prices. Sales tax revenue is just a fraction lower than what was forecast. Officials say commodity economies always have volatility, but the state should improve through this biennium and as we start to build the next forecast that we'd be able to see some steady growth there because we think we've, we've really seen the bottom of the decline in, in the economy as oil prices collapsed and ag prices fell at the same time. Lawmakers say going forward their priorities are making sure North Dakota is headed in the right direction. Later on Valley News Live at 6, some helpful tips for those of you ready to tackle spring cleaning. Up next, how turning in your unused pills can help in the battle against drug addiction.